pastors have to leave the church. They can't just stay there. And sometimes they have to leave coming from home to go see people who have a need. Here's a need that I had. It seemed very simple. It's the same man I spoke of once before who was at the uh, big place down in Martinsburg. I went to see him there as he was trying to recover. Then he almost became what he wanted to be in his recovery. I went to his house one day to see how he was doing. He sat there at the kitchen table. He couldn't use one arm and he couldn't speak very well. And he sat there at the table and we had some lunch together. And after a while passed, he said to me, uh, listen, could you do a thumb for me as a favor? And I said, well, sure, what's that? He said, listen, I can't with my hand, I can't take postage stamps and get them off one at a time. I can't hold it down and do it. Oh, I can do that. I took his whole thing and took every one off. Got a whole stack of ones. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it wasn't hard. I appreciate doing it. And he sat there for a while and he said something to me that I thought was strange. He said, you know, I don't know what to do with myself. I was at the college and I taught there for so many years. I loved what I did. But along the way, my family left me and my family became my children, my, my people in, in the college, the work I was doing, the teaching I was doing, which I loved. And one night when the television was on, I fell on the floor and had this terrible stroke. Thus I went down to that place and I came back here at this place where my family always lived. I'm here alone. I'm very alone. I feel that way. It's very difficult. I said, well, you know, you don't have to do the church thing. That's not something you have to do. If you want to do it, that's fine, but don't do it. Take care of yourself. Call me. Call some other people when you need someone to come in and be with you. We'll do it any time. He put his head down, and he shook his head a little bit, and he, he started crying. A man of I don't know how many years, he stood up, got his hand under the table we were sitting at, he brought the whole thing up and it went down on the floor. He fell down on the street, I mean, on the bottom of the thing. He walked over there and began to hit the re refrigerator and it slid down on the floor and he slid down on the floor and stayed down there. And I just sat there not knowing what to do. I knew I'd pick him up at some point, but he said, he said, not to me, not to anybody. He just said the words, what the hell can God do with a stupid son of a bitch like me? And I looked at him and I said, let's get up first of all. And we talked for quite a long time. Don't worry, your life is enormously important. Yes, you've had difficult times, but there are people that will listen to what you have to say and you will become in many ways a new person. He did. He walked down the thing at the church one day. He had a little thing he had to put his feet on when he walked and he had a bag over his neck. And people in there were in the, muse in the uh, public system there. They knew who he was. He didn't cry. He didn't do anything. He walked down the front of that church, right down to the front. And I looked at him. Didn't say a word. Just he came in and sat down. After it was all over, people started going to see him. Oh, it's so good to see you. We know that you'd never be here. You're here. You're here. And he said, they said to him, why are you here? We didn't think you'd ever come. He said, well, to tell you the truth, I'm here because I want to die without screaming. That's what he said. I smiled because I'd heard it with him before. Amazing.